Humans from earlier recorded history have been fascinated by reflections. In many fairy tales, magical powers have been ascribed to mirrors. However, since the 17th century mirrors have been used in interior decorations and in reflective surfaces such as in bathrooms, hotel lobbies, cars, microscopes, lasers, and examining appearances, etc. So my friends, have you ever gazed into a mirror and wondered how this reflective marvel is made? Well, you're not alone. Mirrors have been captivating us with their reflective allure for millennia, transforming our perception and understanding of the world around us. In fact, since time immemorial, they have served as essential tools, not just for personal grooming, but for a myriad of other purposes as well. They have been used in architecture, art, science, and even in mystical practices. The first mirrors were likely still ponds and polished stones. However, over time, we humans have mastered the art of making them, creating perfect, flawless reflections on demand. This journey of evolution has seen mirrors transition from polished metals in ancient civilizations to the modern glass and silver combination we're familiar with today. In this video, we'll delve into the fascinating process of how mirrors are created, demystifying the mirror one step at a time. So, buckle up for an enlightening journey into the world of mirror making. The journey of a mirror begins with the crafting of the glass. This is where our story takes shape, where we transform humble raw materials into a smooth, transparent pane. Crafting the glass is no easy feat, but it's an essential first step in the creation of a mirror. Imagine for a moment a blend of sand, soda ash and limestone. These are the main ingredients that go into making flat glass. But we don't just throw them together. Oh no, precision is key. Each ingredient is meticulously measured and mixed. The mixture is then heated in a furnace to a scorching temperature of around 2700 degrees Fahrenheit. At this heat, the mixture melts and transforms into a molten liquid. Now this isn't just any molten liquid, this is a sea of possibility, the birthplace of our glass. It's here that we begin to see the mirror take shape. The molten liquid is poured onto a bed of molten tin. It's a fascinating process really. The liquid glass floats on top of the tin, spreading out to form a flat surface. But we're not done yet. The glass is still hot and malleable. It's carefully cooled in a process known as annealing. This step is crucial. It helps remove any stress points in the glass, ensuring it's strong and durable. Quality control is the unsung hero of this process. Every step of the way we're checking, double checking and triple checking. We're looking for any imperfections or any blemishes that could mar the final product. Because when it comes to mirrors, perfection isn't just the goal, it's the standard. The result of all this care and precision is a perfectly flat, flawlessly transparent piece of glass. It's a thing of beauty in its own right, but it's just the beginning. This piece of glass is the canvas upon which we'll create our mirror. Once we have a perfect piece of glass, it's time to transform it into a mirror. But that's a story for another scene. The magic of mirror making happens in the silvering process. This transformative procedure is where a piece of ordinary glass becomes a looking glass, giving us reflections of our world. But how does this happen? Let's dive in. In the silvering process, a thin layer of metal is applied to one side of the glass. This is what creates the reflective surface of the mirror. It's not actual silver despite the name, but usually aluminium or a similar metal. The metal is heated until it turns into a vapor. Yes, you heard it right, a vapor. This is done in a vacuum chamber to ensure even distribution and adherence of the metal to the glass. The glass is placed in the chamber and the metal is heated to its boiling point, where it turns into a vapor. The vaporized metal then condenses onto the glass, forming a thin, even layer. This layer is incredibly thin, about 100 nanometers or 1 ten thousandth of a millimeter. That's thinner than a human hair. But despite its thinness, this layer is what gives the mirror its reflective properties. The metal layer is so thin and delicate it needs to be protected. So a layer of paint or varnish is applied over it. This protective layer prevents the metal from scratching or peeling off, ensuring the longevity of the mirror. The silvering process is a delicate balance of science and artistry. It requires precision and care to ensure the metal layer is even and the glass is not damaged. It's a testament to the skill and expertise of those who create mirrors, turning a simple piece of glass into a portal of reflections. So there you have it. That's the silvering process, the moment when a piece of glass transforms into a mirror, 
a reflective surface that has fascinated humans for centuries. It's a process that combines science and craft, turning a common material into something magical. Now the glass has become a mirror, but we're not quite finished yet. Our mirror is nearly complete, but a few final touches are needed. Now we venture into the backing process, a crucial stage where a protective layer is applied to the silvered side of the mirror. This protective layer acts as a shield, safeguarding the reflective silver surface from scratches and damage, ensuring that our mirror maintains its pristine reflection. Now let's talk frames. Frames aren't just decorative. They provide additional protection and structural integrity to the mirror. They come in a myriad of styles, materials and designs, from classic wooden frames to modern metallic ones, ornate details to minimalist lines. The frame you choose can dramatically alter the aesthetic of your mirror, transforming it from a simple reflective surface to a statement piece of decor. So we apply the backing, attach the frame and there you have it, a mirror that's not just functional but also a work of art. And voila! The mirror is ready to reflect the world around it. So that's the wonderful journey of a mirror, from raw materials to a reflective marvel. Let's jog our memory a bit, shall we? We began with the crafting of the glass, a meticulous process involving the melting and shaping of silica sand. This is where the journey begins, crafting the perfect glass sheet that will soon reflect our image. Then we moved on to the silvering process. A thin layer of silver or aluminium is coated onto the glass, giving it that shiny, reflective surface we're all familiar with. This is the heart of a mirror, the part that makes reflection possible. Finally, we covered the backing and framing, the final touches that not only protect the mirror but also add aesthetic value, making it a beautiful piece of decor for our homes or workplaces. Next time you gaze into a mirror, remember the intricate process that brought it into existence. Wow, what a journey we've had into the mirror world, right? We hope this video has not only reflected the fascinating process of mirror making, but also sparked your curiosity for more. If you've enjoyed this journey as much as we did, don't forget to press that like button. Share this video with your friends and family too. Let's bring them along on our next adventure into the fascinating world of everyday objects. And of course, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to never miss our new videos. Keep visiting our channel for more enlightening content that reflects the wonders of the world. Until next time, keep reflecting and keep exploring. Bravo!